may already be in your market or it's coming to your market or it's going to be coming into your market in the future. And that is the Uber X share uh, ride share experience. So it's currently in nine markets. It's coming to five more this year. And it's, uh, Uber is committed to expanding it to all their markets. So pre pandemic, uh, I used to do these kind of rides. I did a lot of them, hundreds and thousands of them with both Uber and Lyft. So I'm a little bit of an expert. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share with you some of the uh, challenges uh, of doing these shared rides, uh, how to manage your passengers, and what are some of the benefits. There are some benefits to doing this as well. And some of the benefits we don't even know because of the upfront pricing. So I'm going to cover all of that in this video and stick around at the end of the video. I'm going to share with you whether I think the Uber X share experience uh, will survive, will survive. Is there enough demand for it for it to continue on? All that and more coming up. Hey everybody, it's Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy, recording my last video of the day and drinking the last little bit of my coffee here. And I'm wearing my French Hugo Boss shirt. So I'll tell you a little story since um, this is my last video. I was in uh, the south of France in about 2005 and there was a Hugo Boss store and uh, Oxen-Provence, in Oxen-Provence. And me and my uh, wife at the time, uh, we went in, in there and there's a beautiful shirt. It was a white shirt with these blue stripes. And the shirt cost like $200. And at, the, at that point in my life, it just seemed like a lot of money. And I didn't feel like spending the money, although I loved the shirt. Loved, loved, loved the shirt. And after that, I always regretted that I didn't buy the shirt. Fast forward to 2019 and I'm in Paris and there's a Hugo Boss store. And I said to my travel companion, I said, let's go. I got to buy a shirt. I don't care how much it costs. I'm not going to have the experience of loving a shirt and then not buying it. So I went in, found this shirt. It's a black shirt. It's got a little tiny blue little design on it. And I bought it. I don't remember what it cost, but it was... Uh, it has now traveled to many, many countries, and that's the story behind this shirt. So I have a lot of love for this shirt. So that's a little bit of background, but the real background is this is what Uber's up to. It says, shared rides are here to stay. We're committed to providing you with more affordable, efficient, and sustainable transportation options that serve riders, drivers, and cities. So this service is now available in Chicago, Indianapolis, Los Angeles, New York, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Portland, San Diego, and San Francisco. And then it's coming soon this year to five more markets. Uh, this was just announced. Baltimore, Miami, Nashville, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. So what exactly is this? So you, you as a driver are going to have the option of uh, accepting shared rides. And what that means is that you could have up to three different uh, passengers in your car. So you'll pick one up and then you'll go pick up another one and then you may drop one off and then you may pick up another one and then another one. So you have three and then you'll drop one off and drop one off and drop one off. Uh, at one point, I, I had six different passengers over, you know, a, a shared dry ride experience from one end of San Francisco to the other. So. That's what it is. So the passenger is going to pay, they, they get to pay a little bit less, uh, like 20 to 30 percent less for the ride, but it's obviously going to take them longer to get to where they're going. More importantly, they're not going to have the experience of just lounging in the back seat, right? They're going to be, you know, depending on what kind of car the driver has, um, they're going to be in there with two other people, um, at least one other person, maybe, maybe two other people. And um, those people may want to talk. Those people may not smell good. <laughs> those people, I mean, you know, there's, there's the dynamics that you got to uh, take into account. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Number two, what about Lyft? So Lyft, as you can see here, says you will no longer be able to take a carpool ride with Lyft to save money. So Lyft did have a shared ride uh, option uh, before the pandemic. And then they have decided with the new CEO, David Risher, that they're just going to focus on driving one person in the car. They're not going to worry about food. They're not going to do food delivery. 
and they're not going to do the share. So part of me thinks, well, that's great. You know, at least we know what we're getting with Lyft. The environmental guy in me who worries about pollution and how many cars are on the road thinks, you know, Uber's onto something here because instead of, you know, th three different cars driving three different individuals, we're driving three individuals with one car. That makes sense to me. So I'm not sure if I if I love uh, Lyft's position on this, but, you know, that's why we've got competition. Three, are shared rides good for drivers? So part of this answer is I don't know, because I don't know how with upfront pricing, how drivers are going to get paid. So what would be required would be for somebody to be in a, in a market where they do shared rides, do shared rides, grab a bunch of screenshots, and then comp compare how much you're making per hour with a shared ride versus how much you're making per hour without a shared ride. You should be getting paid more for the shared ride. Uber and Lyft are getting more money and you're having to do more work because you're doing more pickups and drop-offs, right? Um, so we don't know that. The other thing about uh, is it good for drivers or not is um, if you're working towards a bonus that's based on a number of rides to achieve the bonus, you can start racking up rides much quicker with the shared because each passenger counts as a trip. So when I had to do 120 rides uh, in a week to make a $500 bonus, I would take every shared ride that I got offered because I could get rides, you know, two, three, four or five rides in an hour um, just picking people up and dropping people off. So in that way, it's great. Where it's not great is you do have to manage the people in your car. I still remember many times where someone got a shared ride and they were in a hurry. And then I had to go pick up somebody else. Then I had to go drop off somebody else. Then I had to go pick up somebody else and then drop that person off. And they're like huffing and puffing. And they think, you know, I'm the devil and I have nothing to do with it. And I'm thinking, why did you do a shared ride if you're in a hurry? You got to get to a meeting on time. Um, but people, you know, make stu some stupid decisions. So you got to kind of, you know, or somebody will just start talking or someone will kind of hit on. I remember some males would hit on women. And so you, you got more uh, BS you got to contend with. It's really so much easier to just have one person in your car. So, yeah, if you get paid more and you're working towards a bonus, good managing uh, more people and more starting and stopping, not so good. Number five, just want to emphasize here that you don't have to do the shared rides. So if it comes to your market, uh, I've been told this on good authority, you will have the option to, uh, to you know, hit a switch so you don't get offered any shared rides. Or even if you do um, uh, say you can, you'll take shared rides, when it comes to you, you can still obviously not accept it. So you have choice. So don't feel like this is being foisted upon you. It's not. You'll always have an option to decline these rides and just take single passenger rides. So what are the key takeaways here? In terms of will this work, it has to work, right? I believe when Uber and Lyft both started, the promise of them was that they were going to take cars off the road. Instead, cars are go more cars are on the road. There's more gridlock. In San Francisco, it's like 500 times more trips are being done than in other parts of the country. And that's because Uber and Lyft both started in San Francisco. So they're kind of a uh, example of what the future looks like for other cities where there is Uber and Lyft. By doing the shared rides, we're going in the other direction, the direction we want to go, which is three, two to three people in a car instead of one car, one person. So that would take more, more cars off the road, reduce traffic, and also reduce uh, pollution. So it has it has to work. And I do hope that at some point in the future um, that Lyft also goes back to doing the shared rides, because I believe that's that's where the future is. And, um, you know, we, we got to think about long term, you know, what do we do into our environment? And this is one one solid way that Uber is doing the right thing, I think, uh, by offering the service so that people can save some money and people are willing I remember people who were doing the shared rides, they talked about the environment. They talked about how important it was that they did this and not do the single ride because they were taking uh, cars off the road. Now that was in San Francisco, which is a pretty liberal city, um, but that's, that's, that's how people were feeling at the time. So yes, it's gotta work. And that's my key takeaway here.
good on Lyft for bringing it back, good on Uber for bringing it back. And um, I, I, I do look forward to when it comes to Sacramento and I can then test it out and see how the pay is. And if the pay is better than, than the regular rides, then I'm even happier about, about that news. So if you like this video, go ahead and, and give it a thumbs up. Uh, we try and keep you informed here so you know what's happening across the country with Uber and Lyft. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, subscribe. We'd love to have you be a part of our team. This is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy. Thank you for watching. Go tell somebody you love them and go out there and be safe. Drive safe out there on the road. Okay, bye-bye for now.